So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released 14.6 beta 3 for iPad OS yesterday and today we're going to find out what's new and if there's anything worth actually sharing. This is going to be a quick one but there is actually some tangible physical things that we see change up. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's get right into this everybody. So if we go into the settings, the first thing that we like to do is actually check out that build number. So if we go into about, go into that 14.6, you can see that we're on 18F5065A. So with that A being there, that means we're getting real close to that RC edition. So the next one should be the RC and then the final release should go out to everybody, hopefully by next Tuesday, depending on what Apple decides to do. So again, 14.6, we're on beta three with the final version there A, so the next one should be RC. And then I didn't take a screenshot of how big the actual file size was, but it was about 350 megabytes on my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So give yourself about 700 to maybe even a gig of space to make sure that you have enough space to get that actually installed easily and ready to go. So that's what we're dealing with. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the actual new features that we found in here. So the first one has to be in the Find My App. So if we go into the Find My App, if I go into my Air Tags, right? This is an Air Tag situation. And if you go into loss mode and enable that loss mode, first you get this nice little splash screen. So notify me when found, pairing lock, and then leave a message. So, and then you can see in the leave a message, it says leave a phone number or email for the finder for your item to contact you. Now that email portion is a part that's new. So if we press continue, now you see that you have the ability to not only leave your phone number here, but then also use an email address so people can actually reach to you via email if that's what you prefer. So if you prefer somebody to reach out to you via phone number, you can do that, or via email, you can now also do that. I'm waiting for the day that Apple's gonna let us put maybe an address on there, right? So if somebody finds something that, and they can't reach you, you know, via phone or email, having an address there, I know there might be a privacy issue there, but maybe an address or something along those lines, it's a place that maybe you can meet that person, that's also a good thing to have. So the next thing is actually inside of the App Store. So I already opened the App Store, so this happened to me, but I'm gonna go into my images. And this is a new splash screen that you get. So it's what's new on the App Store and Apple Arcade. So basically a bunch of privacy stuff. So add privacy details, learn how developers may handle your data and app product pages so you can protect your privacy. So it's just a privacy splash screen. So if I go into here, so this is already taken place, but if you wanna check, we can go into like, let's say Pugby Mobile scroll all the way down if you let it load you now get all these privacy details right here to let you know like hey you're not being tracked or this is what we're doing with your data this data is used to track you for this that and the third so it lets you know exactly what they're using your data for so i actually really like this because at least even though they are taking some data they're at least telling you what data they're taking and how they're using that data so that's a beautiful thing to have kudos to apple for putting that out there and then the next one has to be around the podcast app so podcast has been slowly but surely trying to make and pave their way into the podcast ecosystem, into the podcast competitors. Now, I use Spotify for all of my podcast listening, but little by little, I might actually move over to the actual podcast app. So, one of the first things that you actually do get is a new splash screen also. So, in my images, I took a screenshot. So, basically, Apple Podcast Subscription. So, this is the big one. So, Apple is now allowing people, not quite yet, and I'll show you guys in a second, but they will allow people to subscribe and basically support creators of their favorite podcast, right? So I think this is a way to have maybe a Patreon or a paid subscription service, you know, let the creator first off turn on that setting and then also determine how much they're charging somebody to subscribe to their podcast. So that's also, that's, so that's awesome to have right then and there, just helping out creators and helping out podcasters that you enjoy listening to, you know, make their, make their living off of what you enjoy their time with. So if you go to the podcast app, like I said, it's not ready quite yet. I think it needs to be turned on by the creator. So we'll probably end up seeing it when the final release of 14.6 comes out to the entire public. But one thing that they did add was if you go into three dots and if you go into an actual podcast, they've added a few extra things like mark all as played and then remove downloads. So just another, another little thing that was added into the podcast app. Again, they're just refining the podcast app. So people, when they come in, they're ready to use it and it's ready to, you know, I guess replace all the competitors. And then lastly, Apple did put in the release notes that they fixed a startup issue, which I did notice, especially on the iPad Pro. So if you were to turn off your device and then turn it back on, normally when you boot up a device, even though it's an Apple product and it turns on very quickly, there's usually a slight delay. You know, maybe it takes an extra second to connect to the Wi-Fi or it takes an extra second to make sure your apps are working. But that extra second turned into like two, three minutes. So I would turn on my iPad and it would take like a solid five minutes for it to connect out to the Wi-Fi. Now it's a lot better. So I, hopefully that fixed that issue. But I was dealing with that early on when I was turning off the iPad and turning it back on. Now I didn't deal with it often because I didn't, I don't normally turn it off. But on occasion when I do, it did happen to me about two times. So 
I'm glad that's out of the way, but that's pretty much everything that Apple had in terms of a what's new perspective on iPadOS 14.6 Beta 3. Let's go into the actual battery life section real quick to see you know, how we've been doing from a battery life perspective. So right now we're looking at about 6 hours and 14 minutes of screen on time over the last 24 hours. And if you go into the last 10 days, 4 hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. So, so far, it's been getting a little bit better. As you can see, twice I actually did go over that 100% because you have 7 hours and 15 minutes. And then here again also went over 100%. So all that means is that I did charge it over again to make sure that I had enough battery to get what I needed done. But overall, battery life has been increasing. And again, this is almost a 3-year-old iPad Pro at this point. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these screen times of overall, you know, about 5 hours of screen on time. Yeah, with a new iPad, you should get 10 to 11 hours. But 3-year-old device, I'll take 5 hours for now. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, we saw some tangible differences inside the podcast app with the new Find My, adding an email address to be able to locate or be reached at when you lose an item. So there's a couple things that we did see which were welcome additions to iPadOS 14.6. And again, so right now we're on beta three, hopefully the RC edition is the next one that comes out because I don't think Apple's gonna release a final, final version so close to WWDC. They're probably just gonna solidify the final, you know, the final touches and the final bug fixes and things like that. Hopefully make sure our battery life is good to go and get us ready for these new iPads that should be arriving in the studio hopefully next week. But let's see, I'm sure MKBHD and Daily Tech and some other people might be getting a, you know, an early release model to be able to review. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll give you guys my recommendation if you guys do wanna to update to 14.6 Beta 3. It's worked perfectly well. Battery life is getting better. And overall, again, more welcome privacy additions. I'm always for that. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike and always keep your screen protected. First link in the description below. Until next time, peace.